Hi guys, so I just want to jump on here and have a bit of a casual informal chit chat with you all um, because as everyone in the whole world right now knows there is a very scary virus going around and it has hit many different countries around the globe um, and of course I'm referring to the coronavirus. So I just wanted to have a chit chat and see how you guys are going and also to give um, some of my viewers out there that aren't from Australia a bit of an insight as to what's happening here. I haven't actually prepared any notes for this except for a couple of stats that I wanted to share and these stats are obviously changing by the hour if not sooner so so they might not be as current by the time this video goes live but I'll try and get it up as soon as I can but this video is more about just what's happening in Australia in regards to the coronavirus I know it is hit I think like 170 countries around the world I just wanted to have a chit chat about what's going on here in Australia and just to give you my thoughts and um, just let you know what's in my heart about all these that's going on because yeah it's really scary and um, there's a lot of uncertainty but I'm also staying optimistic that things will work itself out and things will come down um, once the spread has gotten under control which is something I'll get into more detail throughout this video so yeah grab a cup of coffee get, get a snack um, like I said it's gonna be a super informal chit chat video I haven't really done anything like this on my channel before so I hope you don't mind about the change of video style I'm filming this on the 19th of March 2020 um, so it's Thursday today. So like I said, I don't know when this video will go live, but I'll try and get it up as soon as I can. So as of today, according to one of the websites that I accessed um, online, is there's been 218,556 cases of people confirmed to have coronavirus. So that's around the globe. Huge number, very scary number. It's really hard to get my head around the number on the paper and translate that into actual people like human beings living people um yeah like this is real guys this is pretty scary stuff so within the 218,550 six cases that have been confirmed almost 9,000 of those people have died so the exact numbers if you want I'll just put them up here on the screen so I'm not going through too many stats and numbers because this is not what the video is about but Almost 9,000 have actually died from this nasty virus that people are calling just a nasty flu or like a worse ver version of a flu. Yeah, sure, it might be that for some people, but for the elderly and those with other health issues, it is, it's obviously taking their life. So we do have to be more serious about it. In my opinion, with anything in life, education is the key. If you educate yourself, you know, knowledge is power. So you can then prepare um, yourself mentally, physically, and if you need to purchase things beforehand to prepare for like a lockdown, for instance, then at least you are aware of what's going on and it doesn't just spring on you and, um, you know, it, it's a shock when it all does come, you know, crashing down. So I'm definitely not panicking. I'm being realistic about it. Um, and just educating myself um, we are not getting massive amounts of groceries like some people here in Australia which I'll go into a little bit more detail we did um, a bit of an extra shop last weekend just to get a couple of extra canned items and that's basically it um, but even in saying that the shops will remain open during a lockdown and again I'll get into that in more detail um, as this video progresses along but yeah I'm not panicking but I just want to be aware and ready for what's to come and I also want to prepare my young children because I do have two young children age five and three and obviously my three-year-old wouldn't have a clue what's going on um, my five-year-old does because he's at school now and they're actually talking about it and educating them on you know how to be hygienic and washing hands and all that so um, I actually dropped my son off this morning at school and the students are just dropping like flies I think he had like 13 in his class today compared to 20 so the numbers are definitely reducing even though schools aren't closed here in Australia yet so but I'm here mostly just to talk about Australia and how it's affected Australians and what we're doing here in this country so 
at the moment our stats are on 596 cases confirmed so really huge numbers i think the last time i checked this was i don't check this daily or you know regularly as such i think i checked it maybe last week maybe a little bit sooner and we were on 120 so massive jump from 120 to 596 cases massive massive jump and we actually have had six deaths six is still a big number in my opinion because that's not just six people that's you know six families and brothers and sisters and grandparents and you know it affects a lot of people once someone dies um you know it affects the whole family and the whole community um so it it is a big deal for me like six people is six too many um and then i just look at the other numbers across the globe and i'm just my heart breaks for all those families and people that are dealing with this virus and um you know the deaths of their loved ones so my prayers go out to everyone that's been affected or know that someone's been affected or if you've got it yourself and you're up and watching youtube to try and pass the time if you're in quarantine or you know if you're trying to recover you're in hospital like my prayers and thoughts go out to you i do hope that you all have a very fast recovery and come out this on top it's just yeah the whole situation is just very heartbreaking a lot of uncertainty and we're in crisis never seen the world go through anything like this before um so yeah back to how australia is going so as of 6 30 a.m yesterday time so i haven't got an update as of today but yesterday's stats so i'm going to go through all the states and their numbers and these are just cases of you know uh, confirmed cases not deaths but the actual states that have been affected in their numbers so act there's been two cases new south wales is where i'm from and we have the highest number across the country being at 210 which again this number has jumped dramatically since i last checked in it's very very um discouraging to see the numbers are continuing to rise Northern Territory have zero, so that's amazing, and I hope it stays that way. Queensland have 78, so they're getting quite a high up there as well. Um, South Australia, 32. Tasmania, 7. Victoria, 94. That's quite high as well, almost 100. It's getting really scary. Um, and Western Australia, 31. So that actually doesn't equal to 596 because this was updated yesterday um, but the numbers that I got for 596 were from a different site so yeah it's really hard to know the exact stats guys but that's what I kind of pulled out through um, you know a couple of my searches that I did this morning. And needless to say the huge numbers and they're not going down or they're not stopping they're going up. Um, so the current situation in Australia is we are not in lockdown. Um, even though we have almost 600 cases confirmed, we are not in lockdown. We have been told that we can only associate with 100 people together in one, I guess, event or, you know, setting at one time. It was 500 people, but now they've dropped it to 100 people. Um, we are not allowed to fly outside of Australia and I am just waiting for them to ban people coming back in. They have urged anyone that is overseas at the moment that's Australian to definitely come back ASAP because I do believe they'll be shutting the borders very, very soon for people trying to come back to their country. So that's quite scary as well for people that are already traveling and can't get flights home or flights are too expensive. So at the moment, our schools remain open despite these numbers rising, despite the new rule of 100 less people in one room at one time. My son's school definitely have more than 100 kids. They actually have over 300 children, yet their school remains open, which to me is a bit contradicting itself in that advice. Um, and in saying but then in saying that the flip side a lot of the i guess the officials are saying that kids are actually safer at school rather than being exposed to the open community but if they're going to close schools in my opinion so this is just my thoughts and i want to get um i'm just going to get my 
thoughts out to you guys and you may not agree with this you may agree with it like everyone has their own opinion on what's going on at the moment and how you know you think it's right or wrong and all that so this is just my own opinion i'm not saying this is you know what your opinion should be um everyone has a right to you know speak how they feel so this is what i'm basically want to get this video out for so it's just to kind of voice my opinions and let me let you guys know what's on my mind and um what i think would be the right thing to do obviously i'm not in the government you know i'm not sitting there during their meetings so i don't know all the information i'm just getting information from what i can see on the news and online and things like that so with all that said in my opinion if they're going to put out a restriction that we're not allowed to be in a group of people for with more than a hundred or more we can't be in a group of people with more than a hundred you know at one time why are the schools still operating there are still older teachers that are still required to go to school and teach these young students that may be carrying the virus and we don't know it because children based on the research that's coming out don't really get affected and if they do get affected it's very very mild but children are known to be the carriers. So schools are obviously full of children and some of the teachers are a little bit older. Um, you know, teachers these days in Australia don't retire at 65. They go on and they keep teaching because it's such a great job. Um, so they're getting exposed and they're being at risk. And even in just saying that, like I said, my son's school has definitely more than 100 children and teachers at that school so technically if they were going to put a rule out to say no more than 100 in one you know area then that should include schools too i don't understand that concept but either way my son's still going to school they're dropping like flies he's got 13 in his class today out of 20. more and more parents are pulling their kids out of school and keeping them home I guess the hard thing also is is who's going to care for these children and that's another thing that got brought up with one of the live broadcasts like broad um live streaming um that the minister um presented saying that you know if we were to close schools then who will look after these kids usually that will go to like grandparents and then obviously um risking them to be exposed to the virus too um so, in my opinion, what should happen, and now again, I'm not an official, I'm not the Prime Minister, this is just my thoughts, guys, so please don't take offence, but in my opinion, if they're going to close schools, they need to close down businesses and allow parents to stay home with their children. It's the only way to stop the virus spreading even more than it is at the moment. Now, I'm sure that two weeks being quarantined may not be enough to completely stop everything, but it would definitely slow down the spread, in my opinion. Um, the Prime Minister, however, believes, our Prime Minister of Australia, believes that um, this is like a six month or longer process. So being quarantined for two weeks and then going back out into the community is not going to resolve what's going on at the moment. He does think it's going to be like a six month or more process, which is very disheartening again, because, you know, we just want life to go back to normal. I feel like the whole world is just on standstill and you just can't live comfortably. Now in saying all that at the moment, because um, we are watching what the other side of the globe are doing and what they're going through and how they're dealing with things. So people in Australia at the moment have really, I don't know how to say this, have lost their minds, basically. We've gone mad, which has been so sad to see. Um, and um, first time since I've lived in Australia, which has been basically my whole life, I'm I'm ashamed to be, you know, I'm ashamed to call myself Australian because the way people are carrying on about this whole virus and in the community is just absolutely disgraceful. Um, so if you haven't seen updates on the news and things like that, I'll kind of give you a rundown what's going on. So we are all kind of waiting on the edge of our seats for a lockdown. We don't know when it's going to be, um, but it's just a matter of time. So... I think people are just trying to take control of a situation they can't control by just over shopping, overstocking, 
getting aggressive, getting violent in doing that. So our shops at the moment, so if you go into any grocery shop, if you want to buy basically anything now, our shelves are sparse, like completely empty. And they're empty within minutes of the store being opened, which is insane. I don't know how many people can get in there and purchase everything off the shelf. I just, I can't even comprehend that enough to even articulate that into words, but it's just crazy. And it started with toilet paper. And I know toilet paper has been a bit of an issue with a couple of other countries around the globe, but toilet paper is still an issue for us. And I had to send my husband out last weekend because we're actually running quite low. And he went before they opened. And when he got there, it was the lineup was wrapped around the whole building. Um, and as soon as they opened up, it was like soldiers just marching over to the toilet aisle, grabbing every toilet, you know, grabbing the toilet paper. You can only get one per person now because they've had to put a restriction on there. But even in putting a restriction on there, they're still gone within five minutes of the shop opening. So it's just, it's just crazy. And put that aside, people out in the shops at the moment have become aggressive, have become greedy, have become selfish. And to the point where we had an incident in Melbourne where someone got stabbed. And another one where <clears throat> an old lady was sitting at the bus, bus stop with her groceries, which included some toilet paper, and the toilet pa paper got stolen from her bag. It's just disgraceful. I just, yeah, I don't know absolutely disgraceful how people are reacting and you know coping with this and um reacting to what's going on around the globe i guess they think that the shops will shut as well but you know if we are in lockdown i've seen what other countries are doing as well like i've got um friends in in asia at the moment and they're in lockdown too and you know, they still, the grocery shops are still open, their banks are still open, the pharmacy, the chemists are still open. If you do run out of food, you can go and buy some more. I don't understand why people are buying like six months worth of groceries at one time when the stores will remain open, even if it comes to, you know, us being in lockdown. So, yeah, I just don't understand. And Australia has gone mad. <laughs> basically and I, I know I'm laughing when I say that but it's the absolute truth um, and I'm ashamed to be living in this country right now and seeing what's going on and I'm also scared to go out myself with kids to do groceries or to do anything at the moment because there's so many violent aggressive people at, at the grocery shops at the moment so I'm just sending my husband out to get what we need if we need it um, because it's just not worth it. It's just really sad. So yeah, that's a bit of an update of what's happening at the moment. We're okay. We're, uh, um, Adriana does have a bit of a sniffle. She's sneezing and just has a bit of a blocked nose, but it's hard to kind of um, just, you know, pam it off as a cold. Like when you, when all this is going on, it just, everything is kind of uncertain, which is, yeah just a really difficult time and I hope everyone else is doing great and staying healthy and staying indoors as much as you can and keep washing those hands and disinfecting your house and making sure as soon as you come from outside into your house shoes are packed away strip off your clothes guys put them in the washing machine and wash them on the highest temperature that you can and just keep those germs out of your household um, yeah, I think I'm going to end it on this note because this video is going to be super long and I don't, that was not my intention. I just wanted to come on here and I just have a bit of a chit chat. Please let me know in the comments below what it's like, where you're from, where are you from, how's it going, are you safe, are you okay, are you in lockdown, are you not, what's open, what's not open. Please let's have a chat down below and, get, and, and let's just get through this together. Um, because we're all going through it. Your feelings and thoughts are not alone. We are all going through these emotions and these uncertainties at this time. So yeah, 
let's chat, let's stay together, let's be community on YouTube because YouTube is our saviour, right? You can just, even if you're stuck at home, you can still watch YouTube videos. So definitely reach out, we can communicate this way and still be social distancing without, um, you know, seeing each other face to face. We're just seeing each other through the screen. So definitely let me know how you guys are going. I really do pray for everyone out there that's been affected or know someone's been affected. Prayers and thoughts go out to all of you and let's just um, hope it doesn't keep getting worse. But um, I have a feeling we are still yet to see the worst because we have winter coming in Australia too, which means flu season is um, around the corner and that's another fear of mine as well. But one day at a time, we'll have to get through this just one day at a time. It's the only way to do it. And yeah, just... Stay with your loved ones, guys. Stay inside. Wash your hands. And love you all. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.